Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, we'll be talking about whether or not you're overwatering your pepper plants. So many of the symptoms of overwatering actually look like underwatering as well. So the symptoms overlap and it can be really difficult to determine what the problem really is. So in this video, we'll talk first about how to properly water pepper plants, and then we'll get into some of the common symptoms of overwatering. And it is worth mentioning that it's more likely that you're overwatering your plants rather than underwatering because when we have pepper plants growing inside, we tend to kind of just over nurse them and kind of give them too much care rather than not enough. Right, so what is the ideal way to water your pepper plants? Peppers really like even watering. So they like to have evenly moist soil without drowning in water, but also without becoming overly dry. So the key really is to only water when necessary Feel the soil the first inch or two and make sure that it's dried before you water the next time. And we like to use the rule of watering deeply and thoroughly and less frequently. So when you're watering your pepper plants, you definitely don't want to just walk by and give them a little bit of water here and there. You want to make sure you are thoroughly watering the entire plant until you see the water coming out of the drainage holes. And the reason for this is that the root system of your plant is going to search for water. So as the top portion of your soil begins to dry out, there's still water down lower and those roots are going to naturally travel and expand in search of water. And in the process, your plant actually develops a stronger overall root system. And eventually with your potted pepper plants, you should get into the habit of feeling the weight because a potted pepper plant that's just been watered definitely weighs more than a plant that's dried out and thirsty. While we're on the topic of watering, we have an exciting giveaway from our sponsor today, which is Hoselink. They make retractable hose reels, so they tidy themselves up and easily get out of the way after you're done using them. I've been excited to use ours for a long time now. Hoselink is hosting a giveaway worth over $500, so two lucky winners will get a Hoselink reel along with some of their other amazing gardening products. So if that sounds good to you, enter the giveaway in the first link in the description below. And if you want to learn more about the Hoselink reel and how it works, how to set it up, we have a video over on our other channel, Geeky Greenhouse, explaining all of that. Thank you so much to Hoselink for supporting our channel and the pepper growing community. So now let's get into some of the symptoms of overwatering. The first symptom is wilting leaves, and that can actually mean that your plant is underwatered or overwatered. Pepper plants are very dramatic when they're underwatered. These two pictures were taken just an hour apart. It's a pretty stressed out underwatered plant, and after giving it a good thorough drenching, it perked right up. But if your wilted plant doesn't perk up after watering, then it's most likely that the plant is overwatered or there's something else going on. So overwatering can especially be a problem with seedlings, very young pepper plants. Since the root systems aren't developed yet, they don't use or take up as much water. So excess water in the soil can lead to a low oxygen environment, potentially leading to root rot, which can cause the plants to slump over and eventually die. So it's definitely worth checking your potted plants and taking a look at the roots. Root rot will manifest as kind of brown slimy roots instead of good white firm roots. And root rot also kind of has a rotten egg smell. So if you notice that, you may have a rotting issue. And a really common way to overwater younger plants indoors is to leave the water in your trays after you've watered instead of dumping it out. So after you bottom water your seedlings or even water from the top, that water can become trapped underneath and you really want to get rid of that to avoid waterlogging the bottom of the soil. So let's move on to the second symptom of overwatering your pepper plants and that would be yellowing of the leaves. Now leaves turning yellow can definitely be a symptom of many different things including overwatering, underwatering, or some sort of nutrient deficiency. Yellowing leaves can happen at any stage and we mostly associate this with overwatering so if you're seeing yellowing leaves and you've ruled out things like nutrient deficiency or cold weather, then you may be overwatering your plants. If they're soggy and mushy and turning yellow, it's more indicative of overwatering. And if they're dry and crispy, it's more indicative of underwatering. Again, there are many different types of yellowing leaves. There are spots from diseases or cold weather damage. So we have a video all about yellowing leaves on peppers if you want to learn more. So moving on to another symptom of overwatering, which is very common in the nightshade family, including peppers, is blossom end rot. While most people think that blossom end rot is strictly a calcium deficiency, it's actually the result of inconsistent and poor watering habits. 
And this is really common in the nightshade family, so peppers, tomatoes, and eggplants can all be susceptible to blossom end rot. So again, the solution here is even watering. You want to make sure you're watering frequently enough, but not too frequently to avoid blossom end rot. In addition to the symptoms we just talked about, there are some other things worth looking out for when you're trying to determine if you're overwatering or underwatering your plants. If you notice soil pulling away from the sides of your pot, that's a pretty good indication that your plant is underwatered and thirsty. And the type of pot you're using definitely matters too. If you're using a clay pot or a grow bag, it's more likely that plant is gonna be underwatered or need more frequent watering than if you're using a plastic or ceramic pot. A couple other symptoms that are associated with improper watering are flower drop. So if you see excessive flower drop and you've ruled out high temperatures or cold temperatures, then you might have an overwatering problem. And also fungus gnats are associated with lots of water. They need water to live. They will typically breed in the first inch or so of the soil when it's really moist. And finally, if you notice pooling on the surface of your soil, whether it be in a pot or in the ground, that's a good indication that you have poor drainage, which can result in overwatering. So we've been talking a lot about growing in containers, but what if you're growing in a raised bed or directly in the ground and your plants are overwatered? What do you do about that? Well, the issue stems from the composition of your soil. Some soil drains really well and other soil just doesn't drain at all. So depending on where you live and what your soil is made up of, you may have poor drainage in your ground soil. So sandy soil will drain really well and soil that has too much clay will hold water and won't drain well. So if you see pooling on the surface of your soil and you're seeing symptoms of overwatering in your pepper plants, it's pretty safe to say that your soil isn't draining well. One short-term solution you can do is to plant your pepper plants on mounds and that will allow for better drainage around the plant. And you also wanna be adding compost on an annual basis. We amend our soil with compost, not only for the nutritional benefits, but because it helps with drainage as well. And compost will help whether you have good or bad drainage. So if your soil is draining too freely, or if you have really heavy clay soil, the compost is gonna help either way. So it's always a good idea to add compost to your soil. So all that being said, there are a lot of factors that will determine how frequently you need to water your pepper plants, the amount of sunlight they're getting, the type of soil they're in, the size of the plant, the weather, how much natural rainfall is happening. I mean, what else? Yeah, it's a pretty heavy topic and there are so many factors that change how often we water. And there's also only so much that you can control, but just try to err on the side of watering less frequently and deeper and you should be in a good spot. Don't forget to get your entries in for the hose link giveaway before the giveaway ends. Yep, click that link, the first link in the description, or visit hoselink.com win. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.